Uh, you were a very famous Soviet dissident, and now you're drawing a parallel between the European Union and the Soviet Union. Can you explain this a bit? Well, of course, when we speak about the European Union, we have to keep in mind that it's a very, uh, let's say, uh, mild copy of the Soviet Union. We're talking about structures, we're talking about certain ideologies being instilled into it, uh, a novel idea for Europe. We, apart from Nazism and Communism, we never had ideologies here, not governing ones anyway. Uh, uh, we, are, we are speaking about uh, the plans, the direction, the inevitable expansion, uh, the obliteration of nations, which was the purpose of the Soviet Union. Most people don't understand it, don't know it. We do, because we studied in Soviet schools and universities. So the ultimate purpose of the Soviet Union uh, is to create a new historic entity, the Soviet people, all around the globe. <laughs> and, and of course the same is true here, only they call it Europeans, whatever it means. The, that is the idea. The, the, the state, according to communist doctrine, as well as many socialists thinking, uh, the state is supposed to wither away national state. Uh, and uh, of course in Russia it came upside down, it actually became a very powerful state instead of, <laughs> instead of visiting away, but the nationalities were obliterated, they thought so. But when the time of collapse came, the suppressed feelings of national identity came bouncing back and they nearly destroyed the country. It was so frightening. Luckily for us, the communists decided not to resist it. Do you think the same thing can happen when the European Union collapses? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can, you can, uh, you can press uh, a spring only that much. And the human, human uh, uh, psyche is very resilient. You, know, it's a, you can press it, you can press it, but don't forget, it's still accumulating a power to rebound. It's, it's, it's like spring. And it always goes to overshoot when it's been. Some people will say that all these countries that joined the European Union did so voluntarily look like, uh, look to uh, East European countries. No, they didn't. Look at, <laughs> look, uh, look at Denmark, which resisted the Maastricht twice. Look at uh, Ireland, look at many other countries. They, they were under enormous pressure, almost blackmail. Uh, uh, Switzerland was forced to vote in the, five times in the referendum, five times. All five times they rejected it, but who knows what will happen in six times, seven times. It's always the same thing. It's a, it's a trick for idiots. We vote in referendums until people vote what we want, and then we stop referendum. Why we stop? Let's continue every year then, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's a very simple trick. It's what Americans call shotgun marriage. <laughs> Uh, what do you think the youth, young people should do or uh, about the European Union? What should they insist for? Democratization of the institution or just abolish it? No, I, I think the uh, European Union, like the Soviet Union, cannot be democratized. Uh, Gorbachev tried to democratize it and it just blew up. Uh, uh, these kind of structures cannot be democratized. But they we have a European Parliament which is chosen by the people. Yeah, but the European Parliament is too big. Uh, uh, it's uh, selected on the basis of proportional representation, which is not true representation, as we know. And then, you know, it's so much manipulated, so much... Uh, I mean, what, what do they vote in European Parliament on? The percent of fat in yogurt, you know, that, that kind of thing. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's a given a task of Supreme Soviet, a rubber stamp parliament, that's it. If average uh, MP has something like six minutes a year to speak in chamber, I mean, that's not a true parliament. Yeah. <laughs>